in verse 24, Paul says, I suffer for the body of Christ. He says, I bear in my flesh the afflictions that are lacking regarding Christ. Let me clarify this idea. Paul is not saying here that I bear the sins and burdens that Christ bared upon the cross. He's not saying that. There's only one that can do that. The sinless Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is the only one who could do that. But what Paul is saying, I bear the pressures of this world. As Christ has gone on, we are still here. As we live in this world every day, there will be some pressure. He says, I bear all the life pressures that are upon me. I bear them even in front of those in the body so that you may see, but also that you may get closer to your Father. Paul is always being accused of false teaching. He's being accused of not being one that God has called forward to do certain tasks. If you work within the church, you will suffer for the body of Christ. Now, if you ain't working, if you ain't employed, if you haven't employed yourself, you ain't suffering nothing. All right. You come, clock in, clock out, go home. Ain't no suffering. But as soon as you work in the body of Christ, come on, preacher. there'll be something that will talk about you. There'll be something that don't agree with how it ought to be done. There'll be those who may want to be busybodies. I think we really should have done it this way. I just want you to know that. Now, I don't know why they decided to make... I don't know about, but hey, you know, and I think, brothers and sisters, I think, you know, I think they may come in on this, too. You and I, we meet in the parking lot, you know, every now and then. We, we talk. Uh, I need to bring some more poker people into our circle. Anytime you get involved, you become a target. But even in the midst of that, that ought to not drive us away. That ought to put us in a situation where we can say, yes, I will suffer for the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ is important to me. We rejoice in our sufferings. For Christ we rejoice. When we suffer for others who don't believe, we rejoice. When we, when we suffer within the body of Christ, we rejoice. Look at someone next to you and tell them, rejoice in your suffering. What does it mean to rejoice? That's a fun word, Brother Tatler. Rejoice means to give God thanks and to praise Him every single day and in every single situation. If you lost your job, praise the Lord. If you lost whatever it is that was of value to you, you praise God. Things come, ha things come about and things happen that you didn't expect. Do what? <coughs> Praise God because he counted you worthy to go through that experience. You're not doing this all alone. He's with us all the time. Amen? Amen. The second expectation that God has is that he expects Christians to labor in the church. Amen. Look at someone next to you and ask them, do you work? Do you work? Uh, look at verse 25. <laughs> he says, I bear the afflictions and I suffer for Christ, verse 25, of, for the church rather, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Paul, very interesting character. This is one who persecuted the church. Yeah. Now he's working to build and edify yeah. the church. Paul was called with a very special ministry. He actually is known as the Apostle of the Gentiles. Because God commissioned him to begin a ministry that would bring forth the Gentiles and allow them to be added to the body of Christ. This all goes into the mystery which is in verse 26. Let's take a look at this. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations but now has been revealed to his saints. What is the mystery? <clears throat> the mystery that has now been revealed to Paul is that all things are to come together as one, one in Christ. Prior to this, the Gentiles were without hope. Gentiles had no God to direct them. Paul has been ordained and commissioned specifically to share this mystery, again, the mystery that all can be united as one. In other words, Jews over here, y'all get getting ready because here come the Gentiles. <laughs> here they come because in God's eyes, everybody is the same. We all function as one. That is the mystery. But we also, as Christians, have a stewardship. And we looked, talked about this a little bit uh, this morning as Brother Robinson blessed us during our 9 a.m. Bible study. Right. Right. To be a steward... As Paul 
was a steward. It means to be a manager. To see how well you manage things. Why would God bless us with $10 if we can't handle one? He wouldn't bless me with 10 if every time I got a dollar, I go to McDonald's and try to get a McDouble. Because I got a dollar. It will be a dollar nine, I guess, plus 10. But God blesses us with things, and he wants to see how well we manage them. There are those who are stewards of God's word. There are those who are stewards over financial things within the church. Amen. There are people who are, have a stewardship uh, in different capacities and services. But it's not just limited to the work that we do within the church. Uh -huh. What kind of steward are you? Yes. Amen. Paul was one who was commissioned, given the word, so he may share it with others. Amen. How often do we do that with others? All right. Good point. Amen. Are you a good steward All right. on your job? Amen. Are we a good steward at home? Uh -huh. Are we a good steward with our finances? All right. Good. It's pre-Black Friday. That means spend money now so you can go spend more money next week. Amen. Good. Uh -huh. right. good. Good. Nothing that anything is wrong with Black Friday. But if you're not a good steward of your finances, be broke. And have the nerve to say you're suffering for God. No, you ain't suffering. You just spend too much money. We got to be careful of that. Because some of us are going to get, we're going to get bit. Yeah. And we're going to go on run, you know, baby. PlayStation 4, I know you want it. Now, this is my light bill money. Ooh. This is water bill money, and, and I know you want it, and I just... Uh. <sighs> Mom and Daddy are going to see what we can do. We're going we're gonna to see what we can do. Now, that means I'm going to put the credit card payment off. Now, the house mortgage... I, I just wait until I have to... I wait to the last possible day to, to turn that in. That's not being a good steward. Amen. We actually have to be a good... Now, I would say the most important thing you can get your child for the holiday, instead of $400, we'll spend $9.99 at the Christian bookstore. Get a Bible. You can bless your child for a lifetime. Show them how to use it. You bless them. Are we good stewards of our time? What's our time used for on a daily basis? Uh -huh. How much time do we manage to give it back to God yeah. in prayer, in study, yeah. in feeding ourselves his words so that we can make continue to go through throughout the day? You want to suffer full of the word or do you want to suffer empty? Because either way we're going to suffer. Yeah. But God's expectation is that we become stewards within the body uh -huh. of Christ. We work with one another. We work in various capacities and we manage the time, we manage the energy, we manage the gifts and talents that he's given us to use. Yes. You know, all of us have at least one spiritual gift. Amen. You know that? Yes. We all have at least one. Amen. Many of us have the capacity to multiply that yes. if we manage just that one right. right. Look at someone next to you and ask them, do you labor within the church? Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse 28. The third point is that God expects to see Christ in a Christian. All right. I think that goes without saying. I don't know about you. Yeah. Verse 28. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now you notice every man being spoken there a couple of times. Yeah, right. We don't just teach a few people and then go on about our lives. Yeah. Because again, the mystery is that all things are to be brought together as one. Every man, woman, not just the three that I really like, that I really want to see their souls being saved. Mm -hmm. All will right. be commissioned and call forth to come home. All right. Well, in order to do that, people got to be able to see God in you. Amen. And I forget the, uh, the young lady, uh, I guess when my wife was in school, uh, she claimed to be, I think, an atheist. And uh, she stood up to white one day and said, I see God in you. Wow. Ah. Well, hello. But that was different. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. Don't even believe in God yeah. and say that. Yeah. But when people look at us, do they see just us? All right, good point. But do they see Christ in us? 
Verse 28, he says, him we preach. He says, Christ. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. See, in Christ, we warn others. When we admonish each other, I mean, I put my finger in your face and tell you you're doing wrong. All right. And you got it all messed up. No, that means I come up and I say, I want to warn you, or I want us to be careful about some things that could potentially hurt us in the long run. All right. When we warn people, you do it in such a way that it's in love as well. So you can actually take the word Christ out and put love in there as well, because it's two the same. Amen. In love, we warn each other. In Christ, we warn or admonish or teach yeah. one another. So that means, you know, for the one who's already got the best wedding out on DVD, you know, they already got it at home because they bootlegged it. Oh. <laughs> for the one who's already got that, you got to be firm enough as a Christian to go up and warn them. You know, that's illegal. <laughs> that's stealing. <laughs> that's piracy. And I don't believe that that's what God would have you do. Amen. Burning movies, dealing them out at your local barbershop, <laughs> your local hair salon. <laughs> You know, I got that. I got that new, uh, that new sequel to Man of Steel. I did it. The movie don't come out till 2017. How you got the movie already? But sometimes, if we're not firm as Christians, we just say, "Oh, okay," and go over the house and watch the bird movie. Oh, that was a good movie. Hey, now my hands are clean because I didn't buy it. I just watched it. But what are we really encouraging? For folks that like to cut around the corners. We've been taught here that iron sharpens iron. That has to happen from time to time. We have to sharpen each other and teach and warn each other of things that are to come. What I love about um, the special class that uh, Brother Andre Wright and myself and a couple of the young men are helping us out with is that we have an opportunity to work with our young men. And Sister Fitzgerald does as well with this. She already started. Uh, with the young women. <laughs> they say men are a little slow to catch up. It, it took us a couple of years, but we got this. <laughs> but with these classes, we have an opportunity not just to share our experiences, but to allow the students, our youth, to talk to us. And we're able to give them some tips and some guidelines and some advice on what to look out for in the future. We're able to admonish them. We sometimes we use that term as if it's got to be, I can put my finger in your face. You do it in love. Also, if someone is in Christ, you teach them wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge that we apply. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you know this Bible. Mm -hmm. Some of you know it quite well. Yeah. You can quote some verses. You do them. Right. There's conceptual knowledge and experiential knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that separates wisdom from knowledge. I can know all I need to know right. about the Word of God. That's conceptual. I get the concept yeah. that God is alive. Right. I get the concept <laughs> that once I put Christ on a baptism, I'll be saved. I'll be called to be a new creature in Christ. I get that idea. I get that I'm supposed to live my life according to the guidelines and the expectations that Christ has illustrated in His Word. I get that idea. But have you experienced it? Mm -hmm. Have you done that? It would be like me taking an apple and telling you everything you need to know about the apple. This is an apple. Yeah. It's red. All right. It's sweet. It's got a stem. It's got a few seeds when you get in there. There's a peeling skin around it. You can unpeel it. You can bite into it. It, it tastes so good. This apple tastes so good. I just want you to know that. It tastes good. All right. But you wouldn't know anything about an apple if you would not experienced it yourself. Right. All you know is what Brother Tapper told you about the apple. 